had a good weekend, but I'm back at work. I am uh, in the process of just going around and making sure everything's as it should be. Finish welding things. I think I discovered a new type of sedimentary rock. This is upside down, but uh, these are the engine mounts. Um, there's like this hollow space in here. It has these holes on the bottom to to let the water drain out. Um, but mine were packed full of dirt and rocks and it had hardened to almost a cement-like uh, consistency. Uh, you see it down there on the floor. But uh, both sides took a lot of uh, digging. Screwdrivers and dental picks and about everything I could think of to jam in there. Uh, not easy to do. Uh, but, you know, it's clean now. It's got, got all that junk out of there. Lots of rocks, lots of lots of dirt. It's funny how that you know accumulates after so many years. So this is the front end of the car um, under the engine. It's upside down. I know. Um, what typically happens to the frames on these is people jack them up, and because it has this this ridge right here. That takes all the load um, from the jack and the car, and it ends up smooshing it all down. That's exactly what's happened on this cross member. It looks like a great place to jack up the car, um, except it jacks up the car. Uh, so what I'm gonna try to do is uh, drill a hole in here and screw this in there and use it to uh, pull it up. If I had a, a slide hammer, that's the old way to do it, but I don't. So uh, I'm going to get a little creative and, and see what I can do with this. I think that worked pretty good. Was it perfect? No. Uh, besides cutting the rail out and replacing it, it's not gonna be perfect. However, it is better than it was. Um, yeah, so uh, now I'm going to weld it back up and uh, call it a day. There now, if I, if I even want to go crazy, I could uh, fill it in with some, some filler. Uh, it's a bit, of, bit wavy, some bumps. I ground it down so it has the, the same profile as the original. So, yeah, it's not perfect, but uh, it's stronger and uh, it does look better. I just have to remember now to jack it up properly or then it'll be all my fault. Good morning. It's the uh, last day of a short week. Been a little weird. Had a weekend in the middle. If you count working all day weekend. Uh, spent a day and a half doing a bunch of website stuff for my other interests. And then uh, that doesn't mean I wasn't working on the car. Um, I did manage to go to the, to the auto parts store that sells paint. And but to, <laughs> uh, had a guy who spoke English who helped me translate things into French, so the guy who mix mixing the paint could uh, understand what it was I was trying to get. Um, the big stumbling block was the I want to cover this coat af the the car with a coat of uh, 4K epoxy primer, 
And on the internet, they call it 4K primer. So, uh, you know, I, that's what I asked for, and they really confused them until I said 4K epoxy primer. And then I went, ah, yes, epoxy. So then they understood the corrosion resistance I was looking for. So um, that should be ready today. Uh, so I'm going to leave a bit early and pick it up. Um, that doesn't mean I'm ready to jump in and paint because, you know, look at that car. It still needs a lot of work. I wanted the paint on hand so when I sandblast it, I can do the 4K right away uh, so it doesn't sit and rust. As we've talked about before, this, this shop has a humidity problem. It's just seeping in through the walls. Having the uh, hum dehumidifier running over there in the corner, right there, it's really helped a lot. Uh, the windows stop um, fogging up the, the little window in the bathroom. The, uh, the doors stopped dripping. So uh, hopefully I've gotten the humidity down enough to, uh, to paint. I think it'll be okay. Um, so today's project, I, th I think I've done everything on the car I can do in time until I sandblast it and see where it is. Uh, I'm very happy with the state that it's in. Uh, what I need to do is prep for sandblasting. To do that, I'm going to turn this bay into a um, paint slash sandblasting booth uh, with tarps, basically. Um, there's this nice big beam that runs along here. I'm going to hang a tarp off of it. And then from like here over to there to the wall, you know, box out a section a little bit bigger than the car that give me room to move around it. Um, then with, with that all tarped and I have a tarp for the floor and everything with that all tarped out, um, I need something to get the overspray and the, the fumes in and out, not in and out, but out. So I'm going to build a box on this side that will have uh, air, f air filters on it that'll bring the air in. I'll put my little um, radiator. Where'd it go? Oh, it's under, under the desk, under the bench. Put my little radiator in front of it, that one down there, so the incoming air gets warm and I'm not blasting cold air on the car. Um, and then to exit, I'm going to take uh, this old fan, uh, which moves a heck of a lot of air. Uh, <laughs> this one I, I brought in from the States, and so it's still running 210, uh, 120. Uh, I'm going to build a box for it. Uh, it's kind of a special box. Oh, I'll, I'll explain all that later. <clears throat> but then I, I picked up these... Uh, these filters uh, to go on it with, there's one for, these go on your, uh, your vent hood above your stove. It, you can read the picture if you're French and so good. Uh, the first filter has, um, is for fat or dust in my case. The second filter is active carbon. So I'm hoping this will uh, eliminate some of the nasty stuff that comes off the car and uh, I won't get complaints from the neighbors. Uh, yeah, so I have some, some plywood over here that I'm going to cut down um, because, you know, a circle fan like that, no real good way to mount it. So I, I really have to build a case around it and just filter the air out. Um, yeah, so uh, I'll, I'll show you all those steps. Here's a funny before and after for you. <laughs> I've had these gloves. They were meant to be my, uh, my TIG gloves, but I ended up using them for just about everything. Uh, I, think, I think I heat up the, the thumb a lot, and then it, it, the thread gets trashed, and then it splits open. But uh, they've been good gloves, but look, new gloves. Before, after. It's a lot of wear on my hands is saved. Okay, so here, here's my numbers. I figured I ought to do a drawing. 
it'll help me as much as it'll help you. So the filter I have is 47 by 57. Uh, it's made to be cut down for you know your particular event hood, but uh, that's the numbers we're working with. The, the fan diameter is 50 centimeters, and I, wanna, I want it to exit out the bottom of the door, which will be 20.5 because I'm using this uh, two by six looking piece of wood. Um, I have a, uh, have a way I'm gonna close off the entire gap at the bottom of the door with this two by six and, and then I'll have a space for the fan to plug in. Um, I'll show you how that works later. But those are the, the dimensions we're working with. So we're going to have the entrance to the, to the, to the box and I'm gonna draw this in profile. So we have the exit over here, which is which will be uh, twenty point five. Draw your little arrows. And then we have um, a space for the fan in the middle. Uh, well, not in the middle, but uh, somewhere around here, which will be fifty. Um, maybe I want to go a little bit bigger with that so I have room to attach it. Let's go, well heck, let's go 57. And that's 47. Yeah, I'm gonna run out of space uh, with my filter. Uh, let's go, um, let's go 52 with that. And we'll, we can fill the gaps in. Um, so we have, and then we have space for the filter on this profile. Let's go in. Let's go in about two two centimeters, two centimeters, <clears throat> and then uh, this will be. Let's make it the full. Let's make it fifty-two as well because it's going to have some uh, some boxing some. Uh, Battens to attach the the filter to. So if if it's uh, fifty two high, that that should work. And then the battens will f take up the gap between forty seven and and that. We'll cut cut it down to forty seven by forty seven. Okay, so fifty two. This will end up being fifty two. Uh, so I can move that a little closer. Anyway, um, from the side profile, it'll go like this. And then I want some sort of nice curvy thing, right, concave or convex. I think I want concave, so it'll go down like that. <laughs> then it'll push all the air. The fan will stick out a bit here with its cage. And we have the fan <laughs> pushing air, and then it, it'll push all the air down like that. So it's filtered, it's fanned, and then it goes out the, the base, like that. A little bit like a whistle. That's the plan. Well, there it is. I just lost a whole bunch of video. Uh, I did a nice time lapse showing you how I screwed it all together. And I screwed it up. 
Anyway, um, oops. You can see, I uh, first I screwed the, the fan in place, and I held it up, and I screwed the top on, and then I screwed uh, the very bottom piece on. Those were easy. And then I screwed on the, uh, the curved piece. This curved piece, um, if you haven't done this before, it's not, not too difficult. Um, this is really thin Luong uh, in English. I don't know what they call it over here, but uh, it's 3.6 millimeters. Uh, it's thin. Uh, anyway, so uh, I just pushed it down, left it long on all sides, pushed it down and, and just ran screws up the curve and uh, it, it formed to the, uh, the position. So let's test it out. sawdust around seems like it's moving moving air pretty good uh, you know ideally I wouldn't have had to restrict it down like that but um, now I think it's gonna pay off the way it's gonna fit in the garage door and you know I don't want a big fan sticking out the garage door advertising that I'm I'm painting here okay so uh, I, I have some more uh, stuff to do on this. I need to put in the uh, what's going to hold up the uh, the filters. <laughs> now. I've added uh, this 2x6 thing with a hinge so uh, because uh, down here the uh, barrel bolt is, is in the way so I can I can wiggle it and, and uh, undo the barrel bolt. And I've added this uh, catch to uh, hold the door at the right height when I'm using the extractor. Yeah, so that's it for the week. Um, been a strange one. Uh, don't know if I feel like I've made progress, but I've been working a lot. I know I had a couple days off. My paint's about ready. Um, guy called, told me it was, so uh, I'm gonna break off a bit early and go pick that up. In the meantime, with the time I got left here, I think I need to clean up a bit. You know how it works. I won't make you watch it this time. Have a great weekend. Quick one from the side of the road here. I got paint. I've got two kinds of primer and a whole bunch of old English white. Super excited. If you like this video, click the like button below. If you want to come along on the ride as we complete this project, click the subscribe button. If you want to make sure Google reminds you every time there's a new video, click the alarm bell. Your support is very much appreciated.